Hello all, so in this tutorial I wanted to show you how we can store some uh, txt file, text file into SD card. So in the last tutorial we have seen how to do it with binary file. So I just wanted to show, uh, show how can we do it with uh, text file also. That is usually useful uh, if you want to log some information. You are getting some information from uh, some ADC, unlocked digital converter, and you want to store it in the SD card, and later you want to transfer it to your computer, things like that. Uh, in that case, it's very easy to store it in text format instead of uh, binary format. Okay. Now, along with that, I also wanted to introduce you the XRDC interface, the XRDC primitive inside the 7 series FPGA. So in the introduction, uh, I mentioned like uh, FPGAs, they can implement any digital circuit. But if you look at the modern FPGAs, okay, they come with a lot of unlock parts also. Okay, So if you look at the PLLs, face lock loop, they are unlock in nature and uh, also the front end of the services serializer deserializer and gtp gtx primitives uh, they are all unlock in nature okay and in addition to that from 7 series ilix they have a dedicated unlock to digital converter also called xadc silinx adc uh, a 12 bit adc it is there uh, to which you can actually connect uh, your unlock signals and get the digital output and process it. Now, even before all these things, Silinx, they always used to have a, a primitive called system monitor inside the FPGA. So this is again an unlock interface. It has an unlock to digital converter inside. And this primitive that was used for monitoring the on-chip temperature, what is the temperature inside FPGA, uh, we can monitor it using that. Also, we can monitor the voltages so the different voltages we can uh, check the core voltage io voltage voltage supply going to block ram things like that so all these were supported through system monitor and from 7 series fpga and our zinc chip its fpga fabric is 7 series uh, this system monitor and xadc they are combined together uh, as a single interface yeah, so today we will use this system monitor to monitor the temperature inside our fpga and we will try to log that temperature information to the sd card on a regular interval okay so uh, if you program your fpga with any bitstream you can actually see this uh, system monitor in action okay so we need to actually uh, program it So when you connect the JTAG there itself, you can see this XADC system monitor, okay? And uh, uh, you can monitor the temperature here. Now, if you don't put any bit strain, it will always show this uh, absolute zero temperature, minus 273. Okay, so let me program. Any bit strain will do. So let's take some, yeah, from our previous tutorial. And you can see the temperature variation. Okay, so again, uh, so for a lot of research work also, this is useful. You can monitor how the temperature variation is affecting the performance, things like that. And this uh, temperature monitoring that is also used when we have a DDI interface, the MIC memory interface generator, whenever you use, use MIC uh, inside an FPGA for interfacing with DDR. So not the... PS DDI interface. Okay, if you want to interface uh, your PL fabric directly with the external DDR, you'll have to use uh, an IP core MIC memory interface generator. Now, the uh, internal sampling window of this MIC it has to be changed based on the on-chip temperature also. So there also uh, FPGA he will be using this internal system monitor for monitoring the temperature and to decide when to sample the data coming from DDR. Okay, so now to show all this, okay, I'm going to start a new project and this is a very short project. Uh, we don't have any video interface, things like that. Okay, so let me just call it uh, XADC system.
and our PS sync processing system. My plan is to use this uh, IP from Xynix, which instantiate this XADC inside it, and uh, read data from that XADC uh, from the processor and log it to the SD card so that we can uh, later see it on our computer. Okay, so XADC, this is the IP, XADC wizard. Again, a lot of options are there uh, for knowing all the details. You will have to definitely go to the user manual. There you can find all the details. Now, unlock the digital converter. We may interface with uh, XADC later. If you look on uh, Z-Board near your VGA connector, there is a header you can see. That is a header for connecting to XADC. Cast that we may see later. And this is a dedicated interface for connecting analog interface. Uh, yeah, this differential signal, VPVN. And now we are not planning to connect it. Okay, we are just using the internal uh, system monitor inside this IP just to check the on chip temperature so that's what we are trying to do so again yeah again in the user manual you can see like what are these different options we are going to use an axi light interface for interfacing this uh, ip with our processor this is a, a dynamic reconfiguration port interface that means at runtime uh, you can change the settings inside the ip so there are a lot of options again as i mentioned uh, you can set some range for temperature, minimum temperature, maximum temperature, and if the chip temperature goes beyond these values, he will give an alarm. In a sense, he will make uh, one of these output signals high. You can see like user temperature alarm out, VCC internal voltage, auxiliary voltage, things like that. So you can set these values, and if they crosses the limit, this will go high. This you can connect to some LED or something, so that you can see uh, yeah things are something is going wrong and he will also give you an interrupt so you can see there's an interrupt signal tick here so that interrupt will go high provided that you enable the corresponding interrupt uh, using some internal registers okay so we will use this interrupt uh, and uh, why we are going to use this interrupt? So as I mentioned, this guy has an ADC inside and you can see the details here. It's a 12-bit ADC and maximum supported uh, conversion speed is 1 mega samples per second. Okay. Now, what happens is each time he does an unlock to digital conversion, this signal will go high. You see, end of conversion out. And if we enable the corresponding interrupt he will also give an interrupt telling like he has finished one unlocked digital conversion and when he says like he has finished one unlocked digital conversion we will read from this ip and we will get the current temperature value okay so that's the strategy we are going to use and we are going to use a single channel option and here you can see like which channel should be enabled again you can enable multiple channels also that we will have to uh, configure here things like that again i will encourage you to read the data sheet for knowing that uh, but here my main aim is to show you uh, storing data into sd card so i'm just choosing single channel that means we are going to measure only one adc channel and that channel is temperature and we are going to use an axi light interface to interface the processor with this IP core and uh, we are going to read that temperature okay so that's all we need to know at this point okay now we can run connection automation and this XC light we just connect to the GP port and we can connect the interrupt also we can work on polling mode also but uh, since we know about interrupts now makes better sense to use interrupt and I will directly connect the interrupt since I have a single interrupt here okay so as I mentioned before what happens is each time he does an unlocked digital conversion when he converts the temperature value to a digital format he will assert this interrupt provided through software we enable that interrupt okay
podcast so we'll get an intro so we'll get an intro service we'll write an intro service routine and using that routine we will read that current temperature value from here and we will log it to the sd card that's our aim we are not going to connect any of these signals now okay so that's it so now we can just go ahead and uh, generate bitstream then we will export it into sdk and start writing our software see you after that so hardware part is done now let's start with the sdk So new application project, let's call it XADC test and empty application. So here also I'm going to use that uh, SD card C and H files that we developed, but I have made some modifications here to support this text file write operation that I will explain. Anyway, now he will give error because we do not have the FAT system. So enable FAT file system. Okay, so <clears throat> first let me uh, show you the part for this system monitor. So since I am using only system monitor part, this is the header file we are going to use, axismon.h. And most of the part is our usual traditional part. So anyway, I am initializing the SD card for the SD part. Uh, we'll come back to that later. So as usual, we have a uh, lookup config function and config initialize function as usual. And here we are saying we are going to use a single channel. So all these functions are pre-built inside that header file. Okay, so we are saying like we are going to use single channel model and uh, we are going to monitor the temperature. Okay, so this is the constant for temperature. So we have all those constants declared again in that header file, which one you want to monitor. So our aim is to monitor only the temperature. If it is some other value, you just replace temperature with the corresponding constant there. It will just work. And here we are calling again intro setup as before. So we are passing a pointer to the intro controller and a pointer to the system monitor structure and the IRQ number. This uh, does nothing special, it's uh, same as before. So he just uh, initialized the GAC, generic intro controller, and setting the priority, and he is connecting our intro service handler with this particular intro request number, IRQ number, that's it. Uh, our standard stuff, nothing new there. And... Uh, we are just enabling the interrupt and here you can see like we have to do two twice it one is a global interrupt enable again this is a register inside system monitor so only if this is set all the interrupts will be enabled if the global interrupt is disabled that means all interrupts are disabled that is one thing and i'm also enabling end of conversion interrupt eoc so that each time he converts the temperature value into digital format, we get an intro. Okay, so this is that mask for enabling EOC. Again, you can see there are a lot of masks for dif enabling different kind of intro. End of conversion, intro of sequence, VCC aux alarm, VCC int alarm, different kind. Okay, our aim is just to monitor the temperature 
that means each time he converts temperature into digital format we are going to get the intro okay so that's it now this sd card one okay i have added more features here so init and eject they are same as before now i have added this new function called open file so previously we only had read file and write file and whenever you call read file write file he will open the file he will read or write the data he will close the file everything was happening in one shot so that's not very flexible actually uh, because <coughs> uh, when you open a file there are two different cases one is you want to create a new file in another case is like you want to append to an existing file okay like our standard uh, opening in any uh, programming language so i have tried to bring it there so now we have this new function called open file and you have to pass the name of the file i'm calling it logdata.csv which is a text file csv file and you can specify the mode as read write or append okay so you can see what i have done here again depending upon your vivado sorry sdk version you may have to do minor modification if it is read mode it's straightforward okay this is the built-in function and we pass the parameter fa read here if it is write mode uh, what we need to do is usual c language if you open it with the write mode if the file exists it will overwrite that file okay and if the file does not exist he will create a new file that's the idea so i have tried to do the same thing here so first i am trying to open a new file create with the create new in write mode here these are all built in one and this function will return an error if this file already exists okay if it doesn't exist it won't return error he will return something called fr okay so that's what i am checking here if the return value is not fr okay that means that file exists if it is a fr okay that means okay he just created the file and we can just return if the file already exists this is where i am deleting the file you can see f unlink that's the function for deleting then again i am creating a new file and i am just returning straightforward if it is open mode okay so you can see again what i'm doing i'm trying to open a file again open mode that means if the file does not exist he will give an error okay he will give an error so if he gives an error i am creating a new file in that mode now since it is append uh, in the first case that means file already exists the right pointer to that file should be moved to the end position within the file so that's why we are using this uh, flc function uh, to move the file pointer to the end of the file so the next data will get appended if it is newly created file you don't have to do it automatically the file pointer will be at the beginning of the file itself okay so that's what we are doing okay so that is one thing now write file uh, this has become much simpler because you are now supposed to call this function only after opening it in either open mode or write mode okay and here this function is same as before we are just writing to the sd card you need to pass the pointer to the file you need to pass the memory address from where you want to write you want to pass how much data you want to write to sd card and he will update how much data he wrote using this one similarly for read again uh, you are supposed to open it first before calling this function read function and here it just reads uh, the specified amount of data from that uh, or actually he reads the entire data uh, from that file and starts storing it starting from this address okay so much simpler okay so let's come back here so i am opening a new file here this fptr I'm uh, declaring it as global because this will be used in multiple functions, FPTF, file pointer. So I opened it and we will get a pointer to the function. We are just checking whether the file was really opened or not. If it returns zero means he couldn't open the file. Ideally, uh, it shouldn't happen. So whether you use A or W, both should work. Now the main thing is happening inside our interrupt service handler, this one. 
so this is my aim i want to log the temperature data every one second okay so this adc you have seen like he is very fast his conversion speed is like one mega samples per second uh, but i know i'm not interested in all the temperature values okay i want to check the temperature value only once every second now uh, traditionally if you are using a text file in c we have something called this f printf and we can just write it to the file uh, straightforward but here that is not the case here if you try to log every small bit of information to the sd card that will make our system highly inefficient because the sd card uh, it is accessed in a special manner okay block access so the operation is very slow so what you are supposed to do is you buffer all the data to your memory and uh, when sufficient data is there in memory you just dump it to the sd card that's the strategy we usually use okay similar uh, similarly how uh, your cache or main memory works so he stores data into the cache and at some point of time it will be dumped to the main memory and similarly from main memory at some point it will get dumped to the secondary memory your hard disk because hard disk is much slower so that's the strategy we are going to use so this is the buffer where i am planning to initially buffer the data data buffer and i also have a pointer here which is at the beginning pointing to the beginning of this buffer and again, uh, suppose you want to store data for several hours. Okay, in that case, uh, your data buffer should be very, very big, and practically that may not be possible. You have only 5 to MB RAM on Zinc, so you cannot allocate like uh, 100 MB array for storing that. Okay, so here I am always allocating only 1K, and my plan is to store 1K, then dump it to SD card, then again reuse it. Okay, so that's the plan we are going to do. So let's see how it is done. So whenever the conversion happens, analog to digital conversion, we will get an interrupt. So we will go to that uh, interrupt service routine. Okay, and you can see what he is doing. He will first disable the interrupt. As usual, any ISR first, he should disable the interrupt. And he is reading from the interrupt status register, and he is writing back that status register uh, to clear that interrupt first thing. And here he is checking where, what caused the interrupt. And uh, this makes sure the interrupt happened only because of end of conversion operation. This is not a spurious signal. And if it is because of end of conversion, we are reading the data from system monitor. And what data we are reading? We are reading from the temperature channel. And you will get that data. Now the data coming from system monitor or XADC that is not an actual temperature value that is some voltage value and that voltage value has to be converted into a temperature value using a predefined function again you can see it in the data sheet this is the equation again every adc there will be some function which converts this voltage value to the absolute uh, uh, digit value so we are calling that function and he will return the actual temperature value now i'm just printing it on uh, Taratum also, on the serial terminal also, so that we can see like uh, things are really happening. Now this, again, this is standard C style, sprintf, predefined function in stdio.h. And this is the function which is store, used for storing your data into a memory buffer in formatted way. Okay, so I'm saying data pointer, remember at the beginning, data pointer is pointing to the beginning of uh, my data buffer okay so you need to pass a pointer to the memory and you want to say in what format he should store so i'm saying like floating point with uh, three fractional bit and i am passing this temperature data so this will get stored in in the array here now when i get the next intro i need to store it in the same array but my data pointer should be advanced. Otherwise, I'll be overwriting my previous data. So by what value you should increment the data pointer? This is a pointer to a character data. Okay, so increment by one will increment it by one byte. So I'm writing in fractional. My assumption is my temperature will have two bit integer part. 
than three bit fractional part. So if you count it, how many characters I want to store it in text format? I need two integer digit, that means two characters, then one dot, then three for fractional part and one new line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight byte, eight character to represent this information in character format. That's why I am incrementing it by eight. So if you want to store four fractional part, you should increment it by nine. Or if you think like the integer part will have three digits, again, you have to increment it by nine. Okay. So that keep in mind. And here what I'm doing, so each time I'm getting an interrupt, I'm incrementing this log number. And uh, whenever I have 10 temperature values stored in this buffer, again, you can increment it. Only thing is that size should not cross 1024. So 10 means I will have only uh, used 80 bytes because each one is taking 8 bytes. Old. Anyway, so you can put it uh, even 100. It will work. Just for demonstration, I'm putting 10 here. So each time I have 10, I will just print this to see what is happening. I will call this function write file, the one I just mentioned in this SD card one. And I will pass that file pointer. This is why the pointer is declared globally. We are using it inside uh, this function also. And we need to specify how many bytes I want to write. I want to buy, write 80 bytes because 10 data, right? Each one 8 bytes. And the pointer to my data buffer. So I will write it to the SD card. Then I will reset my data pointer back to the beginning of this buffer. That's it. So this is how we are doing it. After every 10 logging, I am stopping. Now, okay, uh, so you can do it uh, as long as you want. But again, for demonstration, I want to stop this logging operation. So when I log uh, 20 data, I will just call this close file and I will just call sd eject to eject it and I will permanently disable the intra to my XADC so that he doesn't generate any more intra once I get 20 data. So again, this you can put uh, 2000, 5000, whatever number you want. If uh, I haven't reached this maximum value, I will just sleep one second. Okay, so this is what is creating one second delay. So once I get an interrupt, before re-enabling the interrupt, I'm waiting for one second. So this will make sure the interrupt comes only once in every second. Okay, so again, all these things, okay, max, look, we can make all of them global if you prefer so that we just have to change it one place okay so let's keep it right okay so i hope uh, logic is clear to you okay so if you want to use the same uh, sd card code in your code only thing you need to make sure it is s printf yeah you need to write it in the format that you need whether integer floating point whatever and you need to increment this pointer accordingly. And when you call this function, make sure you call it with the, the exact number of bytes that you want to look. If you put more bytes, nothing will happen. He will write that entire data. Uh, it will be all null characters, zero to the text file. Nothing will happen actually. Okay, so now it's time to test. So let's first check uh, what is in the SD card. I have already one log data, so let me delete it. So my SD card is empty now. Okay. I'm putting an empty SD card. And since it is empty, I'm opening it in write mode. So he's supposed to create a new file. Even if you put up and there, no problem. It will work. Okay. Okay. So let's put uh, Teraterm. just run. We need run configuration. 
I have exported bitstream so I can run from here itself everything. So you can see the print is coming here from the ISR. It is coming from the ISR. You can see after yeah 10 data he's saying updating SD card this one and after 10 more he will again update and he's supposed to eject it. Yeah he again updated and he said like safe to eject coming from here. So now let me take the SD card and put here. You can see that file is here. Since it is CSV format, we can see, yeah, it is already logged. So you can match the values. They are matching, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Now let me put it back. And let me run again. So this time again, I'm operating in write mode. That means he is supposed to overwrite that previous data. Okay, let's check. And you can see again only 20 data are there and they will match with this one. Okay, so when you are checking it, make sure you close this Excel file because Windows it has some of its memory also. So you may sometimes see it is the previous data. So make sure you close it. Okay, so now let me try the up and mode so that I don't want to lose the previous data. Okay. Let's keep this also. And this time you can see like there are 40 data because he just opened it from the previous data. Okay, so that's it. So I hope this will be useful to you. Now, if you want to read text file from SD card, I guess that is a rare thing to do. But still, if you want to do it, what you are supposed to do is first you are supposed to call a read file and read from SD card to a buffer. Then from that buffer, you need to use scanf to read it to another variable okay so you will put that buffer here yeah syntax will look similar but uh, instead of sprintf you will have scanf this pointer remains there this formatting remains there instead of this one you will have ampersand temperature data so that uh, value comes to the temperature data okay so that you can try out okay thank you see you in next video